Hi, this is Mike Fry. And this is Beth Nelson. And you are listening to Animal Wise Radio, streaming, blogging, podcasting at AnimalWiseRadio.com. And I'm glad to hear that music. I've been missing Nathan. He's been away for a little while in the land down under. And uh, so it's great to have him back on the show this week. And for those listeners who might not know, Nathan is an author. He wrote the book, Redemption, the Myth of Pet Overpopulation and the No-Kill Revolution in, the Mer- in America. He's also the founder of the No-Kill Advocacy Center. He's been traveling the U.S. over the last couple of years talking about the programs that can bring communities to a place where they're not killing healthy animals. And was invited to go down to Australia. I'm green with envy <laughs> because it sounds like a trip of a lifetime, Nathan. So there's there's all sorts of stuff we want to know. We want to know how did you like Australia, but then we want to know how the work part was too. <laughs> yeah, like is 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 there a, a growing movement for no kill in Australia? All that kind of stuff. So welcome back to Animal Wise Radio, Nathan. Well, it's my pleasure, and and of course I missed you guys too. Uh, not enough not to go to Australia, <laughs> uh, Dang. but I did miss you guys and. and and actually, it was a, a terrific trip, and uh, it's a, a beautiful, beautiful continent. And, uh, uh, you know, my family and I really did fall in love with Sydney particularly. It is a very large, a stunning city in so many ways. It reminded me of a mix between uh, San Francisco and uh, New York City, but it was a hell of a lot cleaner than both. Uh, and really an, a great time. But, but for me, the real treasure uh, of Australia was uh, was hearing about the growing no-kill movement there and being able to be a part of it. Well, you know, it, it, people in Australia, and this is maybe a bias, I've never been there, but, um, you know, I've been actively involved in the world of reptiles and the trade in reptiles for pets has been you know, kind of a focus of my uh, mine for many years, and they've been extremely progressive in dealing with that um, aspect of the pet trade. And so I've always kind of had this radical idea that, in general, people in Australia um, have um, more open perspectives on how to deal with some of the challenges of the pet industry. Well, well I'll tell you, you know, the people, and, and I, the people like the people of the United States are incredibly caring and compassionate. It really, there really is a, a a uh, disjunction between how the people feel about the animals and what their shelters are doing. Uh, you know, I was uh, somewhat disappointed, actually very disappointed, to find out that their shelters are remarkably similar uh, to ours. Huh. Uh, you know, they are uh, peddling the fiction that their, sh- their community is unique, uh, and that's why they're killing uh, they are, uh, you know, doing the same thing that American pounds are, and they're, you know, responding to the issue by killing. They're, and they're using the same excuses by blaming the community for their own failures. They're not, uh, you know, implementing all the programs and services that that we've discussed on the show over the last couple of years. They are killing dogs and cats despite rescue groups requesting them. They are discriminating uh, against pit bulls. They discourage volunteerism. Uh, they are not treating ill or injured animals. So the pounds act like us, but the people are incredibly uh, compassionate and generous. And uh, what is what was really scary for me is is I went to this conference. And the first, uh, the, the the morning session of the first day, uh, they had representatives from the different uh, states and territories, uh, and they were discussing uh, what they were doing to respond to, to the the what they call the pet overpopulation problem. You know what I consider to be nothing more than than needless shelter killing, uh, and they were talking about you know how they were passing leash laws and mm. mandatory spay neuter laws, mm. and mandatory licensing laws, and how they were banning the feeding of stray cats, uh, and what was ironic was how they, they sort of tracked how those efforts uh, were going, and, uh, you know, they, they uniformly said, well, it, it doesn't seem to be having any impact on, on impounds. Deaths have not declined, uh, but we have seen, uh, you know, at least in Victoria, a uh, nearly 50% increase in the number of complaints about stray animals uh, because of this program they call Who's for Cats? And they're claiming that if you're for cats, you won't feed them. You will either uh, adopt them yourselves off the street or call animal control uh, to come pick them up. And, of course, uh. Uh, you know, with a 70-plus percent death rate for cats, that means a death sentence seven out of ten times. 
Uh, so so I you was, were kind of wondering why you were there. Uh, exactly. In fact, <laughs> I, had a, I had a crisis during the lunch hour, and, you know, with my wife saying, why, why are we here? Uh, <laughs> that was I, a long flight. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, but so, so I, I pitched my message to them. Uh-huh. And there are what was, you, you know, and I pitched that we're not all that unique because one of the things they told me was, you know, what works in the States is that will not necessarily work in Australia. But if you look at the demographics, they are almost identical. Uh, you know, overall, we're killing about half the animals. They're killing about half the animals. If you adjust their numbers, you know, it's a smaller country, so if you adjust it for the U.S. population, we're spending about $50 billion on our, our, our companion animals. They're spending just over $50 billion. Uh, we're killing about 4 million dogs and cats uh, adjusted for our population. They're killing between 3.5 and 4.5 and million. And if you look at the percentage of households with pets, they're almost identical in the U.S. and Australia. So the message I brought them was we are not unique, and what works in the U.S. will work in Australia. Uh, And what was exciting to me, uh, what was uh, really just dramatic, uh, it was uh, sort of like a night and day in terms of the morning session and the afternoon session, uh, the heads of two uh, open admission animal control shelters, uh, uh, spoke uh, the same, you know, shortly after I did. Uh, one of them, the Animal Welfare League of Queensland, described how they used to follow the old model, uh, and they had all these reasons why they needed to kill, e- e- you know, these animals. Uh, and then they decided that uh, after reading Redemption, that they were going to find all these reasons to keep them alive, uh, in- instead of looking for reasons to kill them. And uh, but for the fact that they took in 3,000 dogs and cats uh, from outside their jurisdiction, they would have been no-kill overnight. Mm. Uh, and, in fact, they've been no-kill uh, since March. Uh, and then uh, another shelter, the RSPCA, in what they call the Australian Capital Territory, which is the equivalent of our Washington, D.C., uh, has been implementing the model, and they're saving 93% of the dogs, which is wow. you know, uh, better than, than uh, you know, the vast majority of shelters in the U.S., right up there with the top-performing shelters. So they're uh, essentially no-kill for dogs and saving 8 out of 10 cats and moving in the right direction. But yeah, that brings back an interesting point. I, I mean, when it, we, I know, I understand why we end up having the discussion about demographics, like saying they're similar to us in the, all these different ways, because it helps draw the parallels. But I also, I, I think that what I keep hearing over and over and over in different contexts is that the demographics don't even really matter. What matters is what is the commitment of the organization? You know, that's what's going to show up in the space. Um, and whether it's a small little town with a large population of pets or a large city with a small population, I mean, regardless of the details, what matters is whether the people in the animal welfare community want to step up and make a difference. In the end, how did they end up receiving the whole conference? Was the, did, you, did you sense a shift? Um, I, it was a dramatic shift. Um, in fact, uh, I, it's the pendulum swung completely the other way, uh, and and what we started hearing was uh, very exciting stories. People came forward. Um, a shelter director in New Zealand said, "We're doing it too, and it's working in New Zealand, New Zealand too." And you're absolutely right, Mike. It's 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 not about anything other than the commitment of the leadership of these shelters uh, to implementing the programs and services that save lives. And, and while we've debunked the myth in the U.S. that communities are unique and can achieve that level of success, uh, we're now proving, uh, at least in westernized countries, uh, that the excuses don't fly uh, in any other countries. And, and with the growing success in Australia, uh, with the movement in its initial stages in New Zealand and showing tremendous pro- uh, promise, what was exciting to me was the head of New Zealand's largest shelter said, uh, you know, New Zealand's going to be the first no-kill nation. And... Uh, uh, the uh, head of the Australian delegation challenged them and said, we've got uh, two, two no-kill communities, and uh, we're going to do it first. And, of course, I couldn't let that pass and <laughs> challenge my country to, <laughs> to be number one since we've had a 15-year head start. Well, wow, when, when Redemption first came out, we said it was going to change everything in the United States. Turns out it could change the entire world, literally the entire world. He's also got another book coming out titled Irreconcilable Differences. We'll keep everybody posted about that. We've got another hour of Animal Wise Radio, so stick with us. We're going to be right back. 